You might want to block out maybe an hour for this video. I have a lot of philosophy to talk about, a lot of cool things to talk about survival kit wise. They will tie into past survival kit videos, past TMP philosophy. I think you guys will really like this video. It's old school, net and fancy wilderness content <laughs> in a manner of speaking. I'm going to call it the day pack survival kit because people understand that terminology, day pack survival kit, but it is much more than that. This is actually an SAWC survival kit. TM peers, please educate those who do not know what I am talking about. I'll wait. <laughs> That's right. Size and weight constraints are important. So we can't take everything we want. We have to make some hard decisions. We're in some type of an adventure and we want to be prepared. I'm going to call it a day pack survival kit because again, everybody knows what that means. Uh, the general audience online will know what that means. TM peers, guys and gals who have watched me this whole time are way more advanced. <laughs> they know my lingo, they know my acronyms and they know what the systems are all about. And this is a systems video, a feature length, can't speak, feature length systems video. Really a wilderness systems video, okay? You guys are going to love this. You're going to love it. Now, some of the stuff I cover might harken back to past videos like my pilot survival kit videos from way back because the concepts are very similar. But since so much time has passed, the technology has changed a little bit in some of the items. We're going to refresh it and I'm going to apply it to, again, an SAWC situation where the weight and size of your survival kit is important. There's so many things that I have to uh, talk about before we launch into the specifics of my kit. Oh, are you excited? I'm excited. It's going to be fun. One of them is uh, there's so many different approaches that you can do when you have a survival kit. You can go online. Uh, you can bounce into Amazon or something and get what is called a survival kit. I have beat up on those pretty hard. Most of them, not all of them, but most of them are pretty inadequate. They may, meet, may make the, the user or the person carrying said survival kit feel prepared, but they are lacking in a lot of important things. But having something like that is better than nothing. And I, I, I would prefer you go out and maybe I throw some links below of survival kits already put together whether it's a 72 hour survival kit that can function in a day pack uh, or day hiking situation. Maybe I throw those below. And if you don't have time, you don't have a lot of money to go out and build this yourself, then do that. At least you have something. That's one approach. So we can go out and get something ready made. And some of those have improved over time. I've talked about that. Another way we could approach this is kind of what I call the YouTube the YouTube survival kit uh, phenomena. And what it is, is dudes will put together a kit just for content. And they'll, they'll put this at, this in it, that in it. They're trying to cover every situation. And it's a bunch of bullshit. That's not this. What I'm showing you, showing you is what I actually carry, whether it's day hiking or on the motorcycle, something that is weight um, specific. I'm gonna show you what I carry. So, and you have to really break that out because when we talk about YouTube survival kits, what we're really looking at is not a, a day hiking scenario. We're not looking at an SAWC kit. What we're looking at is a backpacking scenario. Backpacking is totally different. You have to understand that. Backpacking is where we are building a system for a multi-day trip and my pack, I'm just saying my pack, usually weighs about 80 pounds. I know it's insane. And yes, I do carry that weight. It's insane, but I am prepared and I am comfortable up there and I will have all the capabilities I show you here more actually, but that's a backpacking situation. That's different. Now that is still, 
Here's that philosophy I'm talking about. This is the groundwork for what we're going to talk about because I want you guys to understand this. That is still size and weight limited. We cannot go with a backpack, even a big framed backpack. We can't just put everything we want in there. Well, it sounds like you do, nothing fancy. I'm working on it. Most normal people <laughs> cannot put everything in there. They have to make some, situ uh, some situational decisions. Now, I, by the way, I'm not kidding about the 80 pounds. But then again, I'm producing videos. So I have camera equipment, ex extra batteries. Sometimes I have a drone, other crap I have to carry. Okay, normal people, their backpacking kit will weigh about 35 to 40 pounds. But that's like freeze-dried systems. Um, they're not carrying water. They're really making some hard decisions. Their tent might be a bivy sack, something like that. Their, their sleeping pad is very limited, very thin, in my opinion, very uncomfortable. And that's right. Uh, Professor Nutton Fancy likes being comfortable up there in a backpacking situation, <laughs> which leads us to another adjunct to this interesting discussion, I think. When you, we are talking about a day hiking situation and a survival kit, you have to understand you will sacrifice comfort. We're going to underline the word survival. So what we are carrying is going to make us survive. Not necessarily be comfortable. We could be very uncomfortable. In fact, I will guarantee, unless you have a vehicle to stay in, like a side-by-side -side or something, you're probably going to be very uncomfortable. But... Because you've been prepared, you will return home. Underscore survival. Backpacking is different. Backpacking is, we will have a sleeping mat. We will have a sleeping bag. We'll have a tent. Usually, some guys don't take tents. I do. So, and another way, so I talked about like middle of the road, you know, a ready-made survival kit you can purchase. I talked about the backpacking approach, and maybe that will morph into the YouTube kind of fake survival kit where they're throwing everything in there and they act like they carry that. Okay, fine. But that's backpacking. Another way to approach the day hiking, day hiking scenario is we're going to go super minimalist. And I'm talking about people who have thought about this and, and who are prepared. And so the minimalist approach, and I've watched, I wouldn't say a lot, but a few videos in YouTube of the minimalist, and I'll call it the caveman approach to survival, and it's, in my opinion, very ridiculous and borderline stupid. Guy will sport a loincloth, he'll go out barefooted, he'll take a soup can, a dull knife, and uh, a good attitude, and he'll survive out there. And I think, mostly, to be completely honest, they're doing it for content. Because when you do something outlandish like that, you're going to have people interested to see if you're going to fail. And so it generates views. It generates advertising revenue. There is a reason people do that. Now, if there were no cameras rolling, would these guys actually do this? A few. But I, I would say very few. Most of them are doing it just as a job. Hey, I'm a YouTuber. I go out, I slap my loincloth on. I have a, a rusted soup can, a dull knife, uh, and I go out there and, you know, I make my own stuff. That's the very minimalist approach. And then we can go notches above that where we just, our survival, our survival kit will fit, fit in an Altoids 10. And there's a whole movement on that, that. Hey, I got a fishing kit in there. I got a razor blade as my knife. I've got a couple weights. I have a couple Tic Tacs for my food. We're not doing that. Okay, we're going to be more realistic. That's ludicrous. Again, I just think that's just foolishness because does it give you some capability? If we're being honest, this is how much capability a small Altoid 10 survival kit, in my opinion, that's all this video is about and you're watching it, will do. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. Is it better than nothing? Yes, anything you bring is better than nothing. We've established that already. What we're doing is a nut and fancy approach. It's going to be realistic. It's going to be kind of the middle ground. We are going to take some weight. And I'm going to talk about the weight a lot as we go through the kit. I'm going to say, hey, this is my approach. And all this is my approach. You might take this out to save weight. You might take that out to save weight. But you're going to be pretty much set for a multi-night 
unplanned stay in a wilderness environment, hopefully tailored to your specific location or where you're going. That's another tenant because I don't have everything in my kit that would cover every climate. You might have a desert climate. You might have an Arctic climate. We ought to make some hard decisions. Speaking of which, this is another thing. I told you there's a lot of philosophy. You guys love this stuff. Another philo philosophical foundation for what I'm going to show you is that, remember, this is a survival kit. This is a grab and go kit that we literally grab and we throw in our day pack. We throw in our top case of the motorcycle. We throw in our duffel bag in the side by side. We throw in any adventure. It's ready to go. It's almost like that bug out kit philosophy. Go watch my bug out kit videos. The first part is all about philosophy, just like I'm doing here. And the philosophy is it's sacrificial. Everything you put in that kit, you never take out. If it's a gun, a knife, a flashlight, it's gone to you forever. And you never take it out, not never. I wouldn't say the, the day pack survival kit is quite to that level, but it's close. The reason I'm not going to go full bolt be okay sacrifice on it, in other words, if I put a knife in my day pack, do I leave it there forever? I would say yes, mostly. But when we go through our situation that we're going to put ourselves in, our adventure, you might want to save weight and take something out because it's not appropriate. Does that make sense? Be okay is a whole different thing. I, I don't have time to go into that. We're going to spend plenty of time going through this. It's probably going to be over an hour. So I, I want to make that clear. And th as we go through again, we're going to weigh things or say, hey, this is good weight. This is bad weight. And my approach might be different than yours. So I might have something that I think is awesome weight wise. And I go, hey, that makes a ton of sense. You may go, nothing fancy. You're literally insane. I would never take such a stupid item in my kit. And that's totally fine if you feel that way. Tailor it to your own needs. Tailor it to your own physical capabilities. Okay. Another thing is, you guys, when you see my kit, no doubt, no doubt, I've been doing this a long time. There's going to be comments. They're going to say, you should put this in. Why didn't you include this? My answer to that is, wait. Or, I've made a conscious decision. I don't need that where I'm going. Now, it's easy to type out a comment. You should put in a stainless steel kitchen sink in your kit. You're an idiot if you don't do that. Again, I'm going overboard on that, but something like that. Because most of these people that make those comments do not hike. They do not get out. Uh, and they're quick to post a comment and they don't know what they're talking about because they haven't got out there and done the hard, sweaty, long work to get to a place when it's a man portable system and it will kick your ass. You do that and then you go, hmm, I don't know if this is good weight anymore. Maybe I should just leave that. Speaking of which, when you, if you decide to follow me and make your own survival kit, as you get out and use it, you may say, I don't need this. Maybe you integrate it exactly the way I have it. And you go, I'm going to do exactly what Nothing Fancy did, have that. But then as you go along, you go, well, I have a way to cook food already. It's redundant. I don't need that. Totally cool. Totally cool. So if people say you should add, my answer is you should carry. <laughs> if you're going to add it, you better carry it. Uh, one thing I'm not going to show you is a battery pack for your phone. That's something you could put in there because a phone today is very important. It's a way to get rescued, which is our number one goal, by the way. I'll talk about that again. I don't have that in my kit because I usually carry it anyhow. You might put that in your kit, but they're usually heavy. If you go 10,000 milliamp or higher, they're heavy. So if you have an iPhone, a Samsung or something, you should have a way to charge it. You should have it fully charged before you go out. And by the way, everyone should know where you're going before you go, if you're going in the wilderness. By the way, another foundational principle. Trust me, I'll get to the kit, but guys love this stuff in TMP. We are about the philosophy because it makes our system smart. It, it makes it so we don't make an idiotic system just so we can impress people online. That's not what this is about. 
Another thing you need to understand is you don't take this kit with you when you go to a city park. <laughs> okay. When you are within civilization's reach easily, I would not take this kit. And I'm talking within a couple miles, three miles, five miles. If I go beyond five miles, okay, then I'm thinking, ah, I might throw my day pack survival kit in. If I get out of cell phone range, definitely. If I get to a place where there aren't any people driving by or hiking by, I'm going to take the kit. Now, if you want to take it just for practice and just out of habit, I got gotcha. you. I'm down with that. But understand, for me, I don't take it like if I go downtown. Maybe that's an urban survival kit. <laughs> I have a video about that posted like 12 years ago. Go check that one out. Uh, now, another thing you're not going to see in this kit is a first aid kit. That's different. When I go in a size and weight constrained adventure or on one, I will take a level one plus nothing fancy first aid kit, FAK. Watch my videos on that. My philosophy has not changed and I have updated those. It's been some years ago, still totally relevant uh, information. So I have that already. That is like separate. I, I don't just throw it in here. So I have an FAK, I have my day pack survival kit. DSK, that's kind of a cool acronym, DSK. I like that. Hope it doesn't mean something else, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's different, understand that. So you're not gonna see medical supplies in here. So that's where guys get confused again because they don't have a foundation. They really don't know what the heck they're doing. They're, they're like, I'm gonna throw on Band-Aids, I'm gonna throw on gauze pads, I'm gonna throw, well, that's different. Your medical necessities are so important, says nothing fancy to the world, you have to have your own kit. You don't just throw in a couple of Band-Aids and some damn Bactine and call it good. You have to have a whole bunch of things. Now, again, we go back to that, that kill that sucker. <laughs> Three more and I'm an ace. We go back to that philosophy. Anything's better than nothing. Yes, concur. But for me, I carry my own built first aid kit. Again, I've done some videos and have links to those uh in the bottom of those videos about some ready-made first aid kits that were super affordable and they're not bad. I did one on the KTM 690 Enduro R at the base of a mountain. I go through the whole thing, go watch that video. Still relevant. We need to get going here. How long have I been yabbering, dude? I don't even know. 17 minutes. That is hilarious. Okay. I think I've covered everything. Okay. One more thing. Nothing fancy. Get into the kit. I'm getting there, relax. You need to analyze redundancy. This is really important. Now, TMPers are really smart. They are, you guys are smart. You've been watching the videos for over 10 years, most of y'all. If you're new, come on aboard, glad to have you. By the way, this video is made possible by donors. You should be one. And I'm not just making that up. I'm being dead serious. With this block of days that I have right now in my schedule, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to drive a BMW motorcycle up to Banff, Canada and go camping. Oh, it's a four or five day adventure. Hey, nothing fancy. I'd like to see that video series too. I, I may do that or something like it, but a lot of guys don't like the moto content. I still do it. Donors more so. Um, but I'm just being honest. That, that's what I like to do. I just take off, man. Ride. Solo. Solo. If Sean could go, I'd take him. Solo. Nothing uh, or Tactical Doodle won't come. So I've asked him multiple times. You know, I'm not interested. So don't want to tell you. That's what I would do. But because I have a very thriving, not huge, but small, but very awesome donor environment, donation community and a fancy project, I work, I work, I work, I work. And I know a lot of people will love this video. It will help you maybe save your life. So because of the donors, I've opted to spend my limited time this way. That's my, that's my honest message to the world. <clears throat> Burping. So be a donor, stay as a donor for years and years and years. And this project will keep on rolling. Links below. Let's get into the kit. Oh my gosh, 20 minutes just setting the stage. You guys know how I roll? What do you want, man? This isn't a five minute video. 
I guarantee it'll keep your attention though. I guarantee that. Here's the kit. Ready? Drum roll. Drum roll. Oh, the Nut and Fancy Day Hiking Survival Kit. DSK, I guess. I just made that up, by the way. DSK, I guess we can call that. Nut and Fancy, what the heck does that say heated apparel for? Well, the first thing we're going to talk about is what container to use for your survival kit, your SAWC focused survival kit. This came with some heated motorcycle apparel that I had. I knew I wouldn't use it for that, but I was like, that's a, that's a cool bag. I'm going to save that. So I went through my bags uh, when I built this about, I don't know, a year ago. And I was like, that is awesome. I'm going to use that. And here we are. So you could really make some hard, hard choices in your kit. And you might be able to fit it into something like this zip pouch. This is actually a, a nice thing. I've put level one plus first aid kits in this. I might have some links to all this below. That takes a lot of work for me to do. So if I do it, use the links, please. And if I can find a pro second amendment place to take you, like Optics Planet or, ben, or Blade HQ, I will do that. Anyways, if you can fit it into something like this, do it. Look at your container, make it as, make it as light as possible. What I probably would shy away from, if you're actually an adventurer, if you actually do get out, if you actually hike, don't put it in a plastic bag. That's gonna blow out on you, it's gonna, it just won't last. Voice of experience. So I've done that. So I believe in nylon, preferably polyurethane coated, i.e. waterproof nylon, that's what this is. And again, it just is repurposed from clothing, on we go. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the weight as configured. Again, we're not over here in the backpacking realm. We're not over here in the damn loincloth barefoot realm, which is asinine. We're in the middle. We're prepared. We've made some hard choices, but we take some weight. All this is subject to change. And by the way, if I were to weigh this two months from now, it would probably weigh different. It may be a little bit heavier, maybe a little bit lighter. It just depends on what the situation is and did I jump into the kit and say, I don't need that, I'm taking it out or substitute something. But as it stands right now, three pounds, 12 ounces. Three pounds, 12 ounces. I was hiking deep in the mountains one year, I was backpacking and I was with a friend and we were deep in the wilderness. We were seven miles and to me that's deep, it's not 25 miles, but I'm not, like totally Joe hiker. I do have a schedule to keep. I can't go off for weeks. <laughs> so we're seven miles in the wilderness and here comes this trail runner and dude has an empty water bottle. He has tennis shoes. He has a ventilated cap, a tank top, shorts. That's it. We're seven miles in. He stopped, talked to us. I was like, dude, what's up? He said, I'm just out for a run. He's like, I ran out of water. You guys got any water? Yeah, we do. <laughs> We gave him some of our water. I was, and I asked him, I was like, what do you do if you like you break a leg? If you're trapped out here? And he goes, oh, you know, somebody will come along. And I was like, maybe. See, that's the thing. Some of these guys go, well, I'm always going to get saved. Some will always take care of me. No, they won't. That's another tenant of the DSK. Or any of my survival kit videos. It's like, maybe they come along and maybe they don't. Remember, I said that this is, a, this is when you're on a no-kidding adventure in a remote area. Remember when Mrs. Nut and Fancy and I were, were on, in the Wolverine X4, deep in the Arizona desert? Dude, we didn't see anybody at all, and we were deep in the desert. Now, I don't think that is necessarily a size and weight constrained survival situation. So in that side-by-side, -side, in the Wolverine, I had a bunch of water, had a lot of tools, had a lot of signaling capability, had food with me. I mean, we're going out smart because if this thing breaks down and as we found out in the, on another Wolverine adventure, if my tire shreds and I don't have a way to repair it, which I didn't on that particular adventure with Sean the TMP, -er, what do I do? Oh, somebody's gonna come along and save you. I told, and my friend told Mr. Trail Runner uh, we just said, hey, man, you need to bring more stuff. Take a lightweight, you know, first aid kit, more water. Come on now. And a lot of these trail runners, they don't do that. And honestly, a lot of day hikers don't do it. They take one bottle of water, 
like like this, a bottle of water like this on a seven mile hike. By the way, the temperature's 80 degrees, bright sunshine, holy hell. My point in setting this up is telling you that if you're going to be prepared, at least to the level that I'm setting forth in this video and my other survival kit videos, you're gonna have to take some weight. Even with the improved technology where things have gotten lighter, you're gonna have to take some weight. It's my old thesis, firepower versus mobility. We weigh things. So Mr. Trail Runner, super mobile, super mobile, He's fast. Not weighed down by even a pocket knife, apparently. Or common sense for that matter. <laughs> I like that. No, he, he, lots of mobility, zero capability. We're right here. Maybe a little middle. Maybe, maybe a little bit towards a mobility thing because we're not taking everything. Here we go. Getting into the kit. Oh, anyways, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with the philosophy. Now, in no particular order, I'm going to dig into this. I'm going to show you what's in the kit right now. Again, is it the right, absolute right way to do things? It's my way of doing things. It's how I go, I've gone out in the wilderness. Sometimes it's subject to change. Number one, <laughs> this is funny. Is that scale on? Because we're going to weigh this. We're going to weigh a lot of things. I have a freaking plastic shovel. WTH, nothing fancy. Why would you have a plastic shovel? Are you going to be like digging your, your, uh, you know, your poop hole out there? <laughs> Maybe. No, I think a plastic shovel is lightweight, specifically 1.8 ounces. And with this, I can dig for bait for fishing. I can dig a fire pit. I can level the ground out for sleeping. I can dig in a single, a single signal in the ground. I can write out letters. Could I use a stick? Mm, yeah, I could probably do a stick as well. But it's 1.8 ounces, dude. Plastic shovel. It doesn't cost anything. Yeah, put it in there. Now, the question is, will it be redundant? Would you have, I don't know, uh, <laughs> a poop kit with you? I'll just call it a poop kit, which is like a plastic shovel, hopefully biodegradable toilet paper in some place where you're going to do your business. Far away from water sources, by the way. Far away. At least 200, preferably a quarter mile, says so nothing fancy. Not 200 miles, 200 feet. Take a plastic shovel, says me. Does it take room? Yes, it takes room. See, and this goes into that pouch thing, right? So if this is one item, you can see the problem we're going to have if we go down this pathway. So you can call it what you want. You can call it a poop shovel. But it's, it's a multi-purpose implement. You guys understand this. And, and I have dug natural bait to fish with like crickets and nymphs and stuff under rocks. Dude, I wish I had this. This is a great way to go. You could dig up earthworms with this. Oh. And yes, I do have a fishing kit. We'll get to it. Okay, first let's go to something relatively controversial and it does add some weight. And I'm gonna tell you how much weight it adds. And together, everything I'm gonna show you is not lightweight. It's 13.2 ounces. <sighs> Oh my gosh, that's a lot of weight in a survival kit. You know what? I'm going to agree with that. It is a lot of weight in a survival kit. But, but, here's the deal. Let's say you are day hiking. You decide to do seven miles out, seven miles back. You do have your kit with you. There's two in your party. One guy breaks his leg. Not compound fracture, but it's busted. He cannot hike. He has to stay there while you go fetch help. By the way, you're in no cell phone contact whatsoever. And by the way, which I don't have in this kit right now, I do carry separately. You don't have a satellite messaging thing. I do a Garmin inReach right now. Garmin inReach. I'll put a link below. It's awesome. It's a monthly contract that you have to do, but it can tie into your cell phone, assuming your cell phone's working, talk to satellites, summon help. That's one of the messaging devices. Go watch my water survival kit video and I'll show you another. It's a beacon. So he's busted his leg. He's got to stay there while you go and get help. He's going to be stressed. He might be in shock depending if he fell when he did it. How nice would it be for you to start up your stove instantly and make him a cup of hot soup? Mm. 
You know what, I'm I thought you were pretty much insane when you said it was over three pounds, but now, I don't know, it's kind of making some more sense. Okay, thanks. Here's my stove I'm taking, dudes. This is an Optimus Crux Light. It's 2.6 ounces, I wrote it down. $24, Optimus Crux Light. It is a folding cartridge stove, right? So it's not alcohol, it's cartridge. That's a decision I made. I've talked about this in other videos. Here you go, dudes. And you could go smaller. This is actually a heavier one. I've reviewed some micro stoves before. Just type in stove, nothing fancy in YouTube and you'll see some of those other videos come up. So that is a great stove. It's actually very capable. I could save some weight, an, an ounce at least, if I go with something smaller, more compact and foldable, less capable. I have one small propane cartridge, or butane, I should say. Butane, propane. So it's one of these. That by itself weighs, well, it's not, it's not light, 5.8 ounces. And then I have an aluminum, right now, top half in an aluminum cook kit in my day day hiking survival kit in my DSK. Why do I do all this? This is a lot of weight. And then I have a extra plastic sack that I nest that in right here. One thing I like, this is short and it travels well and it has a wide base so it won't fall off readily off the stove, which I am famous for when I do my cooking episodes. I'm always dumping my crap into the dirt or the snow. Just watch cooking with nothing fancy episodes and I'm always doing that. This one's better. Why do it? because it's ready to go. I don't have to go out looking for fire, uh, firewood, tinder. I don't have to spend time, energy. I call it time, calories, and energy, TCE, another nothing fancy acronym in the wilderness, making a fire. It might be raining, it might be wet. That may be a real chore to make a fire. No, with this, I don't know, 13.4 ounces, I just put it together, lighter, boom, instant heat, by the way. So if it's cold out with dude busting his leg, he can warm his hands. See, instant fire, instant fire. Now, this is something that you would look at and say maybe on a certain hike when you're going over some rugged terrain or a certain situation, I'm gonna take that out of my, D take that out of my DSK. I get you. Maybe not for every adventure is that appropriate. Remember, one of the tenants is grab and go. We're gonna grab this, we're gonna walk out the door and we're gonna go. We don't have to think about it. We have to waste time, hours actually, putting a survival kit together because we are preparedness-minded. Stove. Now, here's another interesting thing that I want to show you guys. And I'm going to duck down here as I grab stuff because I have a whole bunch of more stuff on the floor here. You don't have to go this route. You could go with an alcohol stove. You could go with one of those Snow Peak titanium cups, which I have integrated into my day hikes and other adventures. Those are great. They, the Snow Peak Titanium Cup is much lighter than this, so you want to save mm, probably three ounces. Those things are awesome, but it's more narrow, and it doesn't travel quite as well in this package that I want because it's not flat, and you might find something better. Maybe you find something like this in titanium, which would save weight. This is not ultimately light because, I mean, there's a lot of metal here. So what I had, I didn't go out and buy something special. Another way you could do it, and I reviewed these in 2015, are these takedown stoves, which do burn off of wood fuel that you'd have to go gather. Here's an Emberlit to take down stove. There's other brands. They are legit. They do heat up. They do cook quite well. They are awesome. So look how flat and thin that is. Let's weigh it. 6.4 ounces. So... Here we go with firepower versus mobility. This is mobility. It's still capability. This is firepower. You put it together, do it to it. Just turn a key, you don't have to mess around with this. You're gonna have to fiddle around with it. You're gonna have to put it together. Again, you have to find, source, prepare, kindling and wood to do it. Totally doable. If, if you're in a place that has fuel. You might be out in the desert where wood might be hard to find. Again, it's situational, situationally specific to your environment you're going out in. So, would I integrate this? Absolutely. Yeah, I love this. These things are great. They're great. Thin, travels good, lighter than this, less bulky. Just depends. Just depends. Right now, I'm rocking this. Honestly, because this DSK has been on my motorcycle 
That's why. And I have more, I don't know, weight capability there. There you go, stove. Now, since we talked about stove, we're gonna go into fire right now. And one of the concepts I wanna teach you guys is redundancy. I think I may have mentioned that in this video. Fire is really, really, really important. So I would like you to have redundant capabilities with fire making. When I go out on an adventure, at least on foot, like backpacking or something, I always have a fire kit with me. And my fire kit is right here. It's, it's just like this. I have videos out there and I'm gonna get so bogged down. This is probably gonna go an hour and a half. I know you guys are digging it. So this is my fire kit. I said lightweight fire kit. It's awesome. So I have trioxane in there. Some of the same stuff. Lifeboat matches. Awesome lighter. Backup lifeboat matches. And the same stuff you're going to see in my DSK fire, fire kit. There's more in there. I'm just shorthanding it. If I go backpack, I have a fire kit. But remember, grab and go. So grab and go means we're going to have a fire kit in our DSK and it stays in our DSK. This is weight I never want you to take out. You put it in there, it stays in there. So you carry an extra fire kit, golf clap for you. Good job. Now you have two ways. Actually, a lot more than two ways because in our fire kit, we have multiple ways to make fire. This is my day hiking survival kit. I'm sorry, fire making kit. Yes, it is labeled. And the reason I label things is because you may not be using the kit. You may be the one with a busted leg and it may be a compound fracture and you may have other injuries and it might be someone in your party that doesn't know anything about all this stuff that hasn't watched this video that doesn't have your mindset and they're going to try to figure things out to make you and them survive that's why you label it hmm it's hmm. making a lot more sense now nothing fancy keep laying down the gospel i will okay and this notice my container for this and everything in the dsk is lightweight plastic not freezer bags, it's just a sandwich bag. If I have to replace it, I have to replace it. I want to maximize, uh, you know, I, sorry, minimize weight. Trioxane, if you don't know what trioxane, repent, do better. Trioxane is the best fire maker, hands down. Go watch my fire making videos from years ago. I demonstrate it in the snow many times. What you need to watch out for is that if it's exposed to oxygen, it will literally evaporate. It'll go bye-bye. In this package, was never opened and it has evaporated halfway <laughs> so it's not perfect but it's lightweight windproof amazing troxane's amazing here's my first set of lifeboat matches if you don't know what these are repent and do better you can see the company below again i'm going to put links below uco makes some great stuff and look this this way is what where's my scale dude what is this way if you're just going to put this in your dsk 0.2 ounces almost almost a guaranteed way to make fire lifeboat matches they are amazing windproof the thing is you want to have your i don't know if you're starting a fire you have it ready to go all your kindling set ready to go tender set hopefully some a little thing of track saying down there and you'll rock and roll match kit not ultimately light this one weighs 1 1.6 ounces but we have a striker surface on the side of it. It's hard plastic, it's waterproof. Always put uh, something like a cotton ball in the top because I've dropped these, not necessarily this brand, but I've dropped these before and they have literally exploded like a grenade. Again, not this brand, it was a different kind. This, again, this is the same matches, lifeboat matches. They just, I'm not gonna light it here in the bunker because I'll blow up and suffocate. There you go, check that out. O-ring sealed. Now, do you have to use something this big? No, you can go a lot smaller than this. So, and again, I have some other options for you, ladies and gentlemen of the project. Check this one out also by UCO. So this is waterproof, but you don't have a ton of matches in there, right? And that weighs 0.8 ounces. So that's a great choice for a day hike survival kit. Here's your standard GI match case this is the kind that exploded on me by the way and one reason is, is it had a striker surface like this one does sandpaper in the top and so i dropped it and it exploded notice i put cotton in here one thing you could put in here lots of different ways to start fires you could put vaseline cotton in here other than trioxane that works great lot of fire starters that i've covered in past videos 
Again, go into YouTube environment, type out fire making, nothing fancy, it'll send you to other videos I've made over the years. Flint and steel. This is a Swedish steel, it has a striker with it. And this small one weighs 0.4 ounces, dudes. What? 0.4 ounces? The nice thing about flint and steel is that it always works, right? It always will strike a mat or strike for you and it's just good. This one's brand new, so it's still coated and it's not striking good. But if I broke it in, it'd be showering. There you go. <coughs> I'll set off my smoke alarms. Look at that, dudes. Awesome. Now be careful when you choose your flint and steel, ladies and gentlemen of the project. This one's a, a larger one and I don't think you need a larger one for a DSK. So this is the same manufacturer, I'm sorry, the same brand. And this one will weigh, well, it's not that much, 0.8 ounces, one ounce. It has more capabilities. But another philosophy thing of the DSK is we're not planning to stay out there forever. We are planning to get rescued and get home. Let me talk about that a little second. We're going to take a break from the year and we'll get back. You want to get rescued. And I think there is some confusion in some people's minds, especially in boob tube, about what we're doing. They'll act like, hey, man, it's survival time. Yeehaw. I'm going to stay out here. I'll be out here for weeks. No, bullshit. Bullshit. You don't want to be out there for weeks. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be hungry. That's fantasy. That's pure romanticism. Our job is to get rescued as soon as possible. In the meantime, we want to stay alive. And we are talking about in a rule of law, emergency services working environment. Get rescued. Get rescued. And we'll tie into singling here in just a minute. Okay? Get rescued. In the meantime, it might be, you know, zero degrees outside. So that rescue could be 12 hours away. In the meantime, you might need to build a fire. You might want to heat up some food. You might want to make a fire for, you know, emotional support, cooking. Here's another thing I got. This is kind of cool. So this is a little tiny flint thing. Roll it. I'm doing it the wrong way. There you go. Hey, nothing fancy. You have two flints. That's because, as I said, fire is really, really important. Two is one. Ever heard of that concept? Two is one. In this case, eh, four is one. Four is one. Let's weigh this thing. How much does it weigh? Holy crap, dude. It will not even weigh this. It, it will not weigh this. So it's not even 0.1 ounces, at least on my scale. And if you're wondering what this is, I thought I had the package to it. It's like a little flint rollers. Yeah, I don't know. I'll look for it as we go along. I can't burn the time for it. Anyway, it's a little flint roller. It's cool. And it is by SOL. Shit out of luck. <laughs> no, it doesn't stand for shit out of luck. Anyways, it's cool. It's just, it doesn't weigh anything. If it doesn't weigh something, put it in there. And of course I have a lighter. And this is one of those awesome overseas lighters, the Bix they don't make anymore, adjustable flame. It's basically a fl flamethrower. Yeah, I could take out a pillbox with this thing because it has a flame that is so big. And that's it, boys and girls. That's my fire kit. I've got how many ways to make a fire there? Like four, like I said. And I told you the weight on it. If I didn't, let's do it again. Four ounces for that, for my fire kit. And again, you never, ever, ever, ever take this out of your DSK. Move it along. Now remember, remember, boys and girls, our job is to what? Play around out there? Play Survivor Man? Put on our loincloth? <laughs> play Caveman? No, our job is to go back to our regular lives and get rescued. A lot of people are cuckoo crazy and they think it's fun time out there. No. Now, it's actually going to be quite stressful for you. And if you've ever watched the Weather Channel, uh, they have that survival show where they talk about how people should have died and they didn't in survival situations. It's really good, by the way. Lots of great lessons in there. Yeah, it, you're, you want to get back to society, right, and be rescued. Since that is our priority and not to play, you know, bushcraft out there, we want to get home, we need to have signaling devices, Ways to tell people we are in trouble. And so here is my, <laughs> you're going to laugh because you're going to say, there's nothing in there. My primary singling kit. There's more to follow. Relax. <laughs> okay. 
Nothing fancy. You set this all up, and then you show us, like, two items. Okay, a signaling mirror. This one's polycarbonate. Don't get a glass one. They're too dang heavy. This one's a small. Is this a Gerber? Yeah, it's a small Gerber. I've talked about these in other survival videos many times. You don't need a large mirror. It's fine. Don't get a glass one, though. So in the military, in the Air Force, they always issued these glass ones in our kits. And I was like, this thing weighs like half a pound. Why? That was the technology back, back then. That's why. Then you have your rape whistle. Ooh, that's loud. I hope I don't blow your guys' eardrums out. This is a Fox 40. Lots of good whistles out there. I'm going to show you a couple more. I do have it on a lanyard. I might ditch that metal piece. That's, I don't know, you know something. Do have it on a lanyard because you want your whistle on you all the time. So many people have been rescued just with a whistle. People who have crashed in their cars and down in a gully, no one can see them, whistled so someone could come rescue them. And they heard the whistle. People just drive by like, what's that sound? And remember, three blasts. That's the distress signal. One, two, three. Whistle, whistle, whistle. Pause. Whistle, whistle, whistle. Anyone with half a brain would know that three blasts is a universal distress signal. They would go and investigate, see if they can help a bro out. Whistle. Whistle while you work. Whistle while you work. Whistle while you whistle while you whistle. Here's a really good... This thing's insane. I've used this scuba diving. This is what the freak... It's the wind storm. Holy hell, this thing's loud. I'll spare you. This is a great whistle. Great whistle, and it won't freeze up. None of these have peas in them. Some I do like, like the, um, the dog training whistles. I really love those, and I've talked about those before. Those are great, and they have that shrill, stuttering whistle sound. Just for now, this is what I have integrated. I'm not done. Relax. There's more to it than that. So single mirror whistle. Whistle while you work. Whistle while you get raped. Uh, how about... How about this? I like this. I found this uh, at some stores like super cheap and I it made a lot of sense and it won't bleach out on you as long as you don't show it in the sun. I'm talking about like if you get something nylon and then you expose it to sun, it'll bleach out. But this is just a vinyl thing that you can lay out and it's international orange. Yes, I would take it out of the package. I put another one in there in package so you can see what brand it is and what it is. It's an Orion search and rescue emergency signal flag. It's not ultimately huge, but it's two and a half feet square. <coughs> Excuse me. And it does have tie down. So it's something. You can tie it on the trees, lay it on the ground, loop it over uh, on the roof of your side by side, whatever. Now, not super light. We might take this out. Let's weigh it. Told you we're going to do weight exercises and talk about it. 4.4 ounces. Decide for yourself if you want to take it. Still not done with singling, boys and girls. Now remember, it's situational. If I'm going to a place like that Arizona desert that Mrs. Nutton Fancy and I were in, where really the environment is so harsh that we could die readily, whether it's cold or hot. So that's the two extremes, right? So if you get super hot, you get heat exha exhaustion, you run out of water, you can die, or you can get frostbitten, you can freeze to death, all that stuff. Anytime I'm in that situation, then I really amp up my signaling capability and again we talked about the phone that should be primary if you have your phone this is funny by the way you have your phone you don't go hey man my phone's working but i'm going to just use my whistle what use your damn phone nah nothing fancy said to use a whistle three blasts in case i'm getting raped that's not what i said i said i said it's a backup device your primary obviously would be your phone or your satellite communications device of whatever sort or distress beacon, that's primary. If your batteries are working, use that. Just whatever works and summons help the most effective way. Also with those satellite uh, messaging devices, they're gonna transmit latitude and longitude so emergency services, rescue people will know right where you are. They're awesome. Okay, and that's why sailors always use a beacon. If you go overboard, sailors or people who on the sea will say, get the beacon, get the beacon. The beacon is going to save our life. It's going to transmit the national dis uh, to the national uh, rescue system that we're out here and we're dying. Okay, that being said, let's say we're not in cell phone contact. 
We're in one of those harsh, harsh places. If I do that, then I take more signaling capability. And what I do, you're going to love this. You're going to love, 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 love this. Is I will take a flare pistol with me. If they're not, if it's something not like quite this large, because this is not ultimately lightweight. This is an Orion, whatever, 12 gauge signal pistol. No, it will not shoot regular 12 gauge shells in case you're wondering. And then I'll take my pin flare that I bought way, way back when. It was like in the 80s and I still have that. And I've shown that in some early, early nut and fancy videos and I still have that integrated into a system. But this is a break open, single shot, super lightweight plastic flare pistol by Orion. They're very excellent. They go up like 15,000 miles in the sky. It's like 400 feet or something, it'll say. And then it'll, it'll just, loop down and it's a great way to signal aircraft or search parties you don't want to fire this off just for the heck of it just say hey i'm going to fire it off and hopefully someone sees it you use your signaling pistol your flare pistol when you know people are nearby there's a vehicle you hear someone you have some type of confirmation that people are in the area and they they don't know you're there we would whistle we'd make all the noise we can one two three and then we'd use our Flare pistol, we'd use our signal mirror to passing aircraft. These are all ways to tell people we're here and we need help. This weighs, by the way, uh, let's see if I can get a go weight. Eight, it's 7.4 ounces if I'm seeing that right, which is pretty lightweight for what it can do. This can save your bacon. These are not super lightweight. This is where your weight is. The weight is not in the pistol. The weight's right here. So. There's probably some other flare pistols out there that you could integrate. Do you need this always? No. Do I carry this always? No. It's more weight. Now, if I'm going in an environment where I think I need it, it gets integrated into the DSK. Wait, there's more. Another thing you can use, especially in snow, is dye marker. So we have fluorescent dye marker. You can like write out SOS in the snow. Yes, you could do it in PP. I don't know if that's ultimately visible from a helicopter a mile away though. Use this, write it with this. And yes, there are natural ways to do that as well. So we would stack up rocks that produce shadow, saying SOS, sticks, uh, broken tree boughs, anything to write a SOS. We can stamp that out in the dirt. We can stack up objects. Shadow is your friend. Oh, kill that sucker. Oh, I totally got him. Look, dudes. Two more, two more, and I'm an ace. Awesome. I don't know where they're coming from. Uh, <laughs> Shadow is your friend. I'm not discounting natural ways to signal. I actually advocate them 100%. What I'm saying is that we're going to take more capabilities. Okay, signal, get rescued, moving on. Fishing kit. Fishing kit. I'm not going to break it out. I, don't, I think I've talked about a fishing kit before. It was probably in my bailout survival kit. I did have a fishing kit there and it's going to look very similar. Here's what we have boys and girls. I have a float for now. I just have four pound string on a little mini spool. I'd probably like to put six pound in there. I don't know if I need eight pound unless I'm going to catch a lunker. Probably not. I'll be lucky if I catch like a half inch, <laughs> half inch, half pound perch. I have lead in there, just a couple lead weights. I have number eight hooks. I have a couple bigger hooks. I have a rooster tail in there. One of my all time favorite mountain lures. I guess I will open it up super quick, show you that. Here's some of the hooks. So this is the kind of hook that you want, just something small, not huge, least in my neck of the woods. So in the Rocky Mountains that will catch trout. Don't know if you can see that very well, so sorry. I have a larger hook in there for sure. I have a couple you know, a couple ways to attract fish because yes, I could cut out a fishing pole and then I could just, if I see a fish in there, I, maybe I have these, <laughs> they're all twisted up by the way, rooster tail. So here's a lime green rooster tail tangled up, of course. I probably should put styrofoam on there to prevent that. Too late. And then I have this one. I've really killed up there with this silver one. So it's like a charcoal covered rooster tail. MEPS will work too. And then we use our plastic shovel and we'll dig up natural bait, right? I was talking about that. So those hooks, we can actually set up a trot line with that. If you guys don't know what a trot line, it's just basically a run of our fishing line or we could use our cordage for that. And then we put out hooks on our string, this stuff right here, so the fish can't see it. And then we put a grasshopper, a nymph, 
some type of bait, an earthworm, and then we leave it and we go do our other, uh, you know, things that we have to do in a survival situation to stay alive. And we come back and check it in like 10 hours and we might have some fish on the line. We have protein. Fishing kit. Will I always carry a fishing kit? No. There's places I go that a fishing kit doesn't make a lot of sense. But the thing is, with a fishing kit, it weighs like nothing. I've taken it apart. I have it on this blue towel. I'll weigh it. It doesn't weigh anything. Dude, it's one ounce. One ounce. So it's one ounce. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you just want to leave that in. Okay. So that is... The fishing kit, we talked about signaling, and now we're going to talk about shelter. So in our situation, dude broke his leg. He's going to be out there, let's say a day, 24 hours, while we affect rescue of some sort. And let me throw this in here, by the way. Another application of this DSK, and I'm glad I remember this, and this is super serious. This is a kit that you would take with you that is not necessarily... Uh, constrained by weight, but it's size constrained, but you're not sure if the dude you're with knows, knows what the hell's going on. A good example of this is going in a bush plane in Alaska. Absolutely take your DSK with you. I would like you to take more, but this is small. It's only three, this one's three pounds, 12 ounces. Take it with you because you don't know if that pilot is prepared. You don't know what his, I mean, most of them are. They have good survival kits. They should have a gun by Alaskan law, I believe. But who knows? And if you find yourself out there in the middle of nowhere, literally in the Alaskan wilderness, you'll have a way to survive. Another application for DSK. So anything, cruise ships, by the way, anywhere you go where you're like, I just don't know if I can trust the support system of this conveyance I'm on. Maybe you're going on an Alaskan fishing expedition, Alaskan hunting expedition, definitely take your DSK with you. It's insurance, it doesn't weigh that much, it may save your butt. Thank you, thank you very much. Hey, nothing fancy, two things. One, I'm really enjoying this, and two, no kidding, this is feature length, keep it going. I will. I know, thank you for sticking with me. This is fun, dude. I mean, I'm trying as best I can to get to everything, but as you can see, there's a lot of philosophy. And you guys eat this up. You eat it up.